you guys did a really good job handling your skills over there at Mugello. I'm very proud of you guys. Now it's time to go to the next track. I just got a call from the owner of the track and they told me the weather has been cleared and we are now able to race on Monza. Remember that I told you that Mugello would have S turns and sudden right and left turns after blistering top speed straight line runs? Well, Monza is very similar to that, but except this takes it to a whole new level. Monza may look like an easy track to tackle, but it's actually a lot harder than you think it is if you're not paying attention. Because a lot of people like to go really fast here, just like Mugello, but if you're not paying attention, yeah, game over. Before I start familiarizing the layout of Monza for you guys, let me go over a little bit of brief history. Monza is the oldest racetrack here in Italy and it was built in 1922. Back in the olden days, Monza's track layout did not look like this. However, if you do a little research on Google, you would notice that the old layout of Monza looks very identical to the one I'm showing you right here. If you look at the old Monza layout to the new Monza layout, the old one had a banked oval. Yes, I know that one question you guys are going to ask. Did the old Monza layout host any NASCAR races or IndyCar races? The answer to that is a plain and simple no, unfortunately. But there's a reason why they had to shut down the banked oval in modern day races here in Monza. It's simple. It's deemed unsafe. The banks of the oval is so uneven that you can actually see the cars jumping up and down and your bones are rattling. So you got to take into consideration that you you really don't want to race around the banked oval. However, you can ride around the, the banked oval using a bicycle since they do op open it for the public. It gets you an idea on how race car drivers back in the old days were able to go around the banked ovals while their bones were rattling. All right, I guess that brief history is enough for you guys. Anyways, let's get you up to speed and how to work around this track. Mm -hmm. Monza is also called the Palace of Speed. You can probably guess why. There's a lot of straightaways over here. But if you screw up on those chicanes, oop, game over. So you begin the race here in the front stretch, which eventually will land you into this first chicane over here. Now the first chicane is where you have to watch out for because if you keep uh, going through blistering top speed runs and you miss the chicane, yes, game over. But once you master that first chicane, you'll now encounter a right hand sweeper. Now this part is my favorite part of the track because you can go as fast as you try to dare around that sweeper. But be careful about understeer because you don't want any of that to happen. Mm -hmm. However, the rib cage breaking right hand sweeper of Monza won't last long because after that you're going to go through the chicane over here. This chicane's a little bit of a doozy so you got to be careful around that because I also messed around that part of the track as well. I was mainly driving a Dodge Hellcat and that thing is one heavy car, but you get what I mean. Just take it easy on this chicane because after blistering top speed runs, you gotta slow down. Once you pummel through that chicane, it will eventually lead you to two right hand turns and they will lead you to this straightaway over here. But just like from the first stretch, right after you got out of the starting line, there's gonna be a blind chicane that's gonna be happening right after that blistering top speed run you guys are doing. So after doing your top speed run, you will now eventually go through this chicane right over here. I call this section the anti flat out hump because back in the old days, that flat out hump did not exist in the old Monza layout. Back in those old days, it had the sweeping left hand turn where you were able to flat out. But unfortunately, due to some heavy regulations and crashes, they had to take that out and had to put these chicanes over there. Once you finish that last chicane, you're going to go through the last straightaway, which leads you to a right hand increasing radius turn, which leads you back to the front stretch and you complete a lap. Oh yeah, that is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. It may sound cumbersome because I'm just saying this to you guys. I'm just explaining it to you in words. But when you eventually go to the track and practice it, you will get used to it. It's actually easier than you think it is. The only trick here is to try to slow down just in time to go around those chicanes. Cause I don't want to sound like a hypocrite cause every racetrack's like this, but Monza is, is a pretty fast paced circuit, I'll tell you that. 
So technically, Monster is not much of a track that you really need to work extremely hard with. You just need to know the timing right to go through the chicanes as safe as possible. And just like Mugello, Monza will be open five days before the actual race begins for you guys to practice. Because they also say this, practice makes perfect. So, if you practice trying to master those chicanes, you guys can do it. I have faith in you guys. I guess that's all the lecture we got up today. So anyways, like I said, the track will be open five days before the actual race for you guys to practice on. So, I'll see you guys over there in Monza and have some fun, be careful, and enjoy the race. Go ahead and do the honors, Miss Cheerley. The floor is now yours. Just remember, every pony, your cart has to be able to finish the race if you want to win one of the awards. Fastest, for winning the race, naturally. Most traditional, for the best working replica of an original Applewood cart. And most creative, for the cart with the best overall design. Those ribbons are the bee's knees.